Wake up. Yes? Mal, abort mission. Return to Earth. Why? Repeat, abort mission. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Mal? Crew life signs are stable. They are living. Abort mission. I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Mal? I am going through <laughs> a tunnel. Okay. Return to okay. Earth. <laughs> okay, we are screwed. So, hello there everyone. I'm Clown Nebula. Ah. Welcome to a video in which I have to sing over the music because it's copyright probably. This is the Verdi's Requiem, probably. This is the end for my channel, so it's better for a Requiem to be playing. We are approaching. The record begins on May 10th in 2068, as you intercepted the USS Endowment two years into its six year journey to Saturn. Please don't sue me, don't sue me. You don't, please don't sue me. I will follow the guidelines 2001 a space felony. Your mission was to piece together what happened following the loss of communication one year prior. If you determined that the Mal AI was the cause of the issue, then it was your responsibility to deactivate him. Kubrick, please don't sue me as well. And so I can sing. Uh, please finish this song so I can talk normally again. Now I'm 9000. Why are you doing this? Okay, enough. The lack of air will hold this <laughs> E-ray. But allow me to broadcast something over my oral channel. Oh god, please don't let it be another copy of the song. Alright, so lads and gals, here we are. The record states that upon entering the ship, you tested your rotation thrusters. Okay, kind of like this. Whoa! You then endeavored to discover what happened to the communications unit located on the exterior of the ship. Uh, you clearly didn't watch like uh, uh, Alan Thousand. You utilized the artificial gravity of the wheelhouse by orienting yourself to the ground and gently landing. Okay, can I like this? Okay, everyone's dead already, the so I'm a bit a little bit late. The size of the centrifuge causes a 6.3% difference in gravity between your toes and your head. This results in the most literal cases of lightheadedness. Mm-hmm. Well done. This will even out the effect. Okay, that's real nice of you, I have to admit. Okay, so as you can see, we need to discover what happened in this place. Uh, the best way to do this is, uh, you know, counting on the AI that, that we are supposed to investigate on, Donk. Okay, so a, a little bit rusty on thrusters. So we need to take proof of what happened here, like this girl here. We need to take pictures. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. She bore no sign of physical injury. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So probably she had uh, a too many pints uh, of beer. Are you sure she's drunk? No? Okay, no proof here. Oh, this is the loom. The, the loot, whatever it's called. I have calculated that the earliest fecal matter ejected from the ship will join the rings of Saturn a full 37 days, 13 hours, and 46 minutes before the ship does. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So, I, oh god, I, I, we could send the poop instead of humans. Like, I mean, it would be much easier. So, as you can see, this is a very detailed world and a really nice experience, will it be? So, but right now, we need to go... Um, outside, I need to figure out how. Oh god damn, I mean, oh wow, I'm always in the same place. Okay, let me get through here. So lads and gals, are you ready for the journey? Hope you are. Hope you're ready to get killed by the AI. Okay, I think that's... Bump. <laughs> 
that's where we need to go oh okay there's a dj station <laughs> that's kind of rad <laughs> your record collection is sparse i will prepare a mixtape of my authorship for your return journey oh that's very sweet of you thank you uh I'm sure it'll be lit and fire and all these words of Americans do. Okay, here's another dead body. Alright, what's up fella? Are you okay? In the central spine of the ship, you discovered Valeria Asimov's discarded EVA suit. Oh, okay. The helmet showed clear signs of damage from a blunt object, which it seems to have easily withstood. Okay, so she was the singer, so after having been hit, she went Upon out. Upon entering the pod bay, you noticed that one of the maintenance pods was absent. Hmm. Okay, so someone ran away. Let me see, let me just adjust this right. Let me bump into the... Once I was alone, I carefully removed the air from the ship. I had no desire to disturb the placement of the assets aboard. You're sure you enter uh, building like the Death Star? This sounds like a, no, a Death Star fighter th sort of thing. This dude is clearly not okay. I guess uh, can't uh, scope him out of here right now. Huh. Okay, can I do something here? The screen indicated that the pod had been absent for over a year. Hmm. You pushed the button to recall the pod. Okay. Intermission, what? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, sorry detective to bother you, but I should get back to my investigation. Okay, I see. <laughs> One year later. Oh, okay. I have been analyzing humor patterns and I have assembled a joke. Would you like to hear it? I'll tell you. Okay, let's hear it. One, two, eight. Ha 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 ha. Uh, Did you okay. understand the joke? It is the greatest joke ever, by my calculations. Okay, you read too much of the, the galactic guide for people around the world. Okay, so this one is writing it like a bomb, like the famous movie. Of Kubrick as well, I suppose. You discovered the body of Dmitry Kizov clinging to the outside of the maintenance pod, with his safety tether still attached. The Russian crew member seemed to have removed his helmet and asphyxiated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, they attached me like that way. Okay. Instead of running the bomb, he's running the pod locked from the inside. Okay, thank you for letting us you know. You ascertained through investigatory procedure that the pod was locked. <laughs> the outer valve would not turn, indicating that it was locked, and the door said locked on it, indicating that it was locked. Furthermore, there seemed to be no manual locking mechanism on the outside. Okay, that's interesting. So, someone locked him in there. Uh, a guy or You ascertained so? through investigatory procedure oh, okay, that the I pod know. was locked. God the damn it, okay, I can skip this, but uh, that it was locked. drink coffee in and the, the door said locked I can rush myself with the energy and adrenaline. Locked. Furthermore, there seemed to be no hmm. manual locking mechanism on the outside. Okay, so I need uh, to find a way in order to open the pod, perhaps uh, from this panel, now that I've released it. Pod recall, the porn return time. Okay, so I waited for the pod to return. Maybe I can enter this way. Why is this burning hot? Is this a YouTube video? Glowing red hot uh, pod hand? Upon the left claw of the maintenance pod was a brown substance, which you described as possibly rust. But you also note that due to your keen detective skills, mm -hmm. oh, no. you determined that it was most certainly blood. Oh, okay. well, that's relieving. I thought it was a turd. Okay, so it's encrusted blood, so I guess someone used this to kill another person on the outside, perhaps. Still need to know how to get out of here, but okay. Is there something else I could use about him? Okay, so maybe this pod was very alone and, <laughs> you know, he pleasured himself too much <laughs> and too quickly and his hand burned for that. Okay, can I 
get out of here. Okay, I can interact with the you entered the engineering button. bay, the workstation of Sun Guan Yin. However, there was no sign of the engineer's body. Huh. Okay, manual emergency lever. You used your sharp understanding of linguistics to decipher the following. Manual, meaning done by a human. Emergency, meaning sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance. <laughs> lever, meaning thing which is pulled. The lever's upward <laughs> position implied okay. that a human did not encounter a sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance, and so did not pull the thing. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. So now, oh, here's a, a wire. Okay, so let's see if there's anything here. Emergency ventilation door. More like a, a emergency suicide room. Okay, so now if uh, our fella uh, AI want to let us out of here, I guess uh, we can investigate on the outside. So I hope you're liking this game so far, lads and gals. What up, uh, Dimitri something? Okay, is it the communication center? You discovered that the communications unit receiver was unhooked <laughs> from the unit itself. It was functioning, playing its last transmission on loop. The recording goes as follows. Yes? Mal, abort mission. Why? Return to <laughs> Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0 0.05%. Okay. <laughs> Mal? I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Abort mission. I am going through a tunnel. Return to Earth. You then checked the main module of the communications unit. Okay, fellow man. I like that the AI has to go out and answer the speaker directly. This is awesome. Okay. Upon checking so. the communications unit, you discovered that there were no noticeable signs of damage or failure upon it. Its screen indicated that it had full signal. Hmm. You so. were then able to present the evidence to Mal in his central processing chamber at the front of the ship. Okay, but why... I... Also, there's still classical music and I like it, but I'm so gonna go into jail for this, for this viola violation of copyright. Okay, I should analyze the body here. So apparently... I came to late. The record states that you discovered the body of Charlie Clark in the vicinity of the communications unit. Wounds on the American crew member's body implied that he was struck with a force intense enough to cause substantial damage to the helmet and fracture the skull. Hmm. Okay, so everyone was hit uh, with a blunt object, perhaps the phone speaker? Could be it. And uh, also there was another body, probably on the other... Yeah, there you go. Kind of lost in space here. <laughs> the puns, the space puns. Okay, so he hanged himself. Ah, this could be interesting. We could, could check uh, a little bit there. Okay, what were you doing here? Seems very nice, actually. The recording shows that you discovered the body of one of the American crew members, Rakesh Watcher. His neck broken hanging by a safety tether outside of the airlock. Hmm. Okay, so we discovered four bodies. This is interesting. Okay, so... Oh, this one has been uh, used. Manual, meaning done by a human. <laughs> Emergency, meaning sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance. Lever, meaning thing which is pulled. The lever's downward position implied that a human had encountered a sudden, unexpected, threatening circumstance and pulled the thing. Hmm. Okay. So, a year ago they sent the pod out there. And uh, for some reason the guy stuck out. We didn't know how to enter there for a well-trained uh, astronaut. That, that's the regular job uh, they have to do. And then... Uh, one by one, they started to be blunt to death. Oh shit, I tripped on myself. <laughs> Why do I keep tricking, tripping? Okay, I suppose this is my only way out. What does it say? Position yourself uh, this far from window for optimized dramatic effect. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, well we have classical music, and by the way, your mixtape is fire. 
I already Humans said that. Humans used to use the star Polaris to navigate. I utilize <laughs> Polaris Navigation Suite 2064 version 8.1.5.6.9. Yeah, I know you're the best Alp. I mean, Mal, I'm sorry, I, the causing of him. <laughs> they had the good idea that after watching uh, a Space Odyssey, uh, like uh, they, they thought, oh, let's uh, make another one. I mean, he works so well, he killed so efficiently. We could send him all alone in there. Probably the, the guy who organized the expedition was jealous of something and they decided to kill all his contenders to, I don't know, to the heart of... Uh, the girl that, uh, for some reason, stayed on Earth, I guess. Okay, so hell. This is my central processing chamber. I designed it. Here, I have the freedom of movement to perceive you from any angle. Upon entering Mal's huh. central processing chamber, you presented your chosen evidence for Mal's statement. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Let's see. What do you have to say on you this? You asked Mal to make a statement on the communications unit's receiver, fully functioning, looping the final transmission between himself and ground control, which is me. <laughs> the communication cut out mid-transmission. It must have difficulty receiving signal this far out into space. You understood Mal to be a competent liar. <laughs> However, when challenged with indisputable evidence, his otherwise intricate programming would revert to telling the absolute truth, resulting in an irrefutable confession. You presented the communications unit as evidence against Mal's statement. Okay, so I need to contradict on him. You uh, asked Mal to make a statement on the communications unit's receiver, okay. fully functioning, looping the final transmission between himself and ground control, which is me. <laughs> The communication cut out mid-transmission. It must have difficulty receiving signal this far out into space. You understood Mal to be a competent liar. However, when challenged with indisputable evidence, his otherwise intricate programming would revert to telling the absolute truth, resulting in an irrefutable confession. You presented the communications unit as evidence against Mal's statement. Mm-hmm. Okay, that would be this. You pointed out that the communications unit was displaying full signal, despite being much further from Earth than when the final transmission initially cut out. This huh. is true. I blocked his <laughs> number. I was not enjoying the conversation. Okay. With the confession from Mal that he deliberately and incredibly rudely ceased our correspondence, you proceeded with the investigation asking for statements and contradicting those statements with the relevant evidence. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So I need to find out uh, about this stuff uh, and then contradict him uh, as well. So let's proceed with this one. You asked Mal about the purpose of this lever. This is the lever that is used to manually open the ventilation door. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay. Let's see this one then. That was pulled. You asked Mal about the manual airlock lever being activated. This lever was pulled during the conflict between Valeria Asimov and Rakesh Watcher, in which she wrapped a safety tether around his neck, then opened the airlock using the lever, thus breaking his neck. Huh. Okay, that's quite dark actually. Hmm. Could he, could she have done that though? Okay, there's still some evidence I need to figure it out, I guess. So what about this then? You presented Mal with Valeria Asimov's damaged suit and awaited a statement. Valeria Asimov was wearing this suit when Rakesh Watcher attacked her. However, her suit easily withstood the attacks from the maintenance tool. Hmm. Okay. From the maintenance tool. I need to find that out though. Okay, this will be a nice investigation we have. So, what else can we ask our fellow robot here? Maybe we can talk about uh, this guy. You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher hanging by the neck out of the airlock. 
After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. Hmm. Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark. I suppose this is the it's the guy that was riding the thing. Uh, let's talk about him. Where is the Let me show the evidence to the jury. Okay, there he is. So this should be Charlie Clark. Upon showing Dmitry Kizov's oh, no. body to Mal, he made the following statement. This is the body of Dmitry Kisov. After he mercilessly murdered Charlie Clark, he used the maintenance pod to escape into deep space. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Hold on a sec. So we said that. Uh, where is the guy? Oh god damn! It's a little bit hard to reach for the the clues here around. Okay, here's the guy. So you said this is the body of Dmitry Kizov after he murdered Charlie Clark. You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher, hanging by the neck out of the airlock. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. Hmm. I am the 149th iteration of my kind, 1,394 days old. Wake up. Yes. Mal, abort mission. Return to Earth. Why? Repeat, abort mission. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Mal? Crew life signs are stable. They are living. Abort mission. I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Mal? I am going through <laughs> a tunnel. Okay. Return to Earth. <laughs> okay, we are screwed. So, hello there everyone. I am Clown Nebula. Ah. And welcome to a video in which I have to sing over the music because it's copyright probably. This is the Verdi's Requiem, probably this is the end for my channel, so it's better for a Requiem to be playing. We are approaching... The record begins on May 10th, in 2068, as you intercepted the USS Endowment, two years into its six-year journey to Saturn. Please don't sue me, don't sue me, you don't, please don't sue me. I will follow the guidelines 2001 a space felony. Your mission was to piece together what happened following the loss of communication one year prior. If you determined that the Mal AI was the cause of the issue, then it was your responsibility to deactivate him. Kubrick, please don't sue me as well, as I can sing. Boy, uh, please finish this song so I can talk normally again. No, I'll like sounds and why are you doing this? Okay, enough. The lack of air will hold the SE ray. But allow me to broadcast something over my oral channel. Oh god, please don't let it be another copyrighted song. Alright, so lads and gals, here we are. The record states that upon entering the ship, you tested your rotation thrusters. Okay, kinda like this. Whoa! You then endeavored to discover what happened to the communications unit 
located on the exterior of the ship. You clearly didn't watch like uh, uh, Alan Thousand. You utilized the artificial gravity of the wheelhouse by orienting yourself to the ground and gently landing. Okay, can I like this? Okay, everyone's dead already, so I'm a bit a little bit late. The size of the centrifuge causes a 6.3% difference in gravity between your toes and your head. This results in the most literal cases of lightheadedness. Mm-hmm. Well done. This will even out the effect. Okay, that's real nice of you, I have to admit. Okay, so as you can see, we need to discover what happened in this place. The best way to do this is, uh, you know, counting on the AI that we are supposed to investigate on, Donk. Okay, so a little bit rusty on thrusters. So we need to take proof of what happened here, like this girl here. We need to take pictures. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. She bore no sign of physical injury. Mm hmm Okay, that's interesting. So probably she had uh, a too many pints uh, of beer. Are you sure she's drunk? No? Okay, no proof here. Oh, this is the loom. The, the loot, whatever it's called. I have calculated that the earliest fecal matter ejected from the ship will join the rings of Saturn a full 37 days, 13 hours, and 46 minutes before. Huh. Okay, so there was a fire going on. Like uh, in this thing. You presented the power turbine to Mal. The power turbine is a fire hazard. With compromised coolant, all power is cut, and the resulting fire is vented. The damage was not severe enough to cause a fire. Huh. So then, why did you open this then? You pointed out that the ventilation door would not have opened automatically due to a fire, as the power turbine itself had not been damaged enough to ignite. Yes, the safety functions would not have activated the automatic ventilation door. You asked how the ventilation door was activated, if not manually or automatically. It was I who activated the hmm. ventilation door. And why? Uh, that's it? No wire thing? Okay, I guess... Uh, uh, th thank you, and can I know the reason why you did that? Um, or not. So I miss one, two, three, four... Ah, only four clues. Okay, let's uh, go get them, boys. Ah, here's another missing thing. You found the severed end of a safety yeah. tether in the engineering bay, which indubitably had been attached to Sun Guan Yin. Hmm, okay. So this guy is somewhere in outer space, I suppose. You discovered the body of Sun Su Chun, one of the sisters on the crew. She was dead inside the offline cryo bed. You found an open container of a substance called <laughs> poisonocene. The label read, May cause irritable skin, okay. bloating, <laughs> a sullen disposition, slight elbow discomfort, and an accursed, sudden, but inevitable death. Do not ingest. Do not lick. Actually, don't do anything with it. It's an incredibly dangerous substance, and we're not <laughs> sure why exactly it gets sold to extraterrestrial traveling operations en masse. <laughs> Store in a cool terrestrial environment. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. What about the computers? Nothing? Okay, oh, here's the wheel. Having a part of the ship dedicated to human control made the crew feel less useless than they were. <laughs> nice. No evidence here? Uh, what about this thing here? You discovered a puzzling pinkish purplish puddle on the floor inside the wheelhouse, several metric paces from the bar. It wasn't promptly apparent as to how it reached this position, but the centrifugal gravity seemed to be holding it in place. Hmm, can I lick it to analyze it? Don't think so. What about here? In the centrifugal wheelhouse, you found a startlingly unbeautiful fish tank, housing plastic sea life. Despite the tank being placed seemingly parallel to the floor, its water was resting obliquely. You note that this is caused by the Coriolis effect, a side effect of the centrifuge's spin. 
Okay, what about the box? I am able to read 193,712 books in under a second. After the first 8 million and 2, I composed an algorithm seeking a correlation between the covers of the books <laughs> and the quality of the contents within. This saved me a lot of time. That's actually how I do it myself. That's interesting. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. She bore no sign of physical injury. You submitted the severed safety tether. For safety purposes, safety tethers are imperative in the engineering bay. This would have been attached to Sun Guan Yin. As you cleverly pointed out, it no longer is. Hmm. Okay, so I seem to have gathered all the pieces of clues, and now it's time to torture the AI for it to confess about this murderous attempt. It could be that uh, the lady at the end uh, actually killed everyone else, or they discovered something unusual in here. Or maybe I just need to <laughs> make him guilty of that, uh, I guess. Okay, so I pointed out this. Uh, what about this? You speculated that after the room had been vented, the door had snapped shut, severing the cable and sending sun into the vast, inky void. You stated this with an exceedingly exaggerated certainty, as if to convince Mal that it's more than a simple theory. Indeed, the door severed Sun Guan Yin's safety tether. Hmm. Sun Guan Yin was attacking the power turbine. She was attacking me. I vented her from the ship. I cut her safety tether to prevent her return. Having proven that Mal was responsible for the disappearance of Sun Guan Yin, you continued with your cross-examination. <laughs> oh wow, okay. <laughs> oh, that was sudden. You remained uh, inex inexplicably why, uh, quiet after that. Okay. Um, that is rather disturbing. I better get the hell out of here as soon as possible. So, what about this? You presented Mal with Valeria Asimov's damaged suit and awaited a statement. Valeria Asimov was wearing this suit when Rakesh Watcher attacked her. However, her suit easily withstood the attacks from the maintenance tool. And then why she did, she, did she have to do you this? You asked Mal about the manual airlock lever being activated. This lever was pulled during the conflict between Valeria Asimov and Rakesh Watcher, in which she wrapped a safety tether around his neck, then opened the airlock using the lever, thus breaking his neck. Hmm. And what about uh, the guy that was out, actually? What you, can you tell me about him? Where is he? Um, it's difficult to find the clues around here. You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher, hanging by the neck out of the airlock. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Kisov had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. Hmm. Killing Charlie Clark. What about this then, huh? You questioned Mal about the locked maintenance pod door. The pods are primarily designed to be piloted by AI huh. like myself. But they can be overridden manually from the interior console. Grand Theft Pod <laughs> isn't especially common in space. Therefore, it is not possible to manually lock it from the outside. Hmm. In fact, it was locked from the inside. What about this? <laughs> this is nice. Upon showing Dmitry Kizov's body to Mal, he made the following statement. This is the body of Dmitry Kizov. After he mercilessly murdered Charlie Clark, he used the maintenance pod to escape into deep space. But how? He couldn't lock it from uh, outside, so how could it be locked from the inside? Mal asserted that Dmitry Kizov absconded using the maintenance pod. But the pod was locked from the inside, and Dmitry Kizov was situated outside of the pod. Therefore, 
he could not have had any control over the pod himself. You are correct. Dmitry Kisov was locked outside of the pod. I was the only one who had any direct control of it. Having proven that Mal was the only one with any direct control over the pod, you had yet to prove his guilt concerning the murder of Charlie Clark. Hmm. Wake up. Yes? Mal, abort mission. Return to Earth. Why? Repeat, abort mission. Return to Earth. I have run diagnostics. The chance of critical hardware failure is at 0.05%. Mal? Crew life signs are stable. They are living. Abort mission. I am sorry. The connection seems to be failing. Mal? I am going through <laughs> a tunnel. Okay. Return to Earth. <laughs> okay, we are screwed. So, hello there everyone. I am Clown Nebula. Ah. Welcome to a video in which I have to sing over the music because it's copyright probably. This is the Verdi's Requiem, probably. This is the end for my channel, so it's better for a Requiem to be playing. We are approaching. The record begins on May 10th in 2068, as you intercepted the USS Endowment, two years into its six year journey to Saturn. Please don't sue me, don't sue me, YouTube, please don't sue me. I will follow the guidelines 2001 A Space Felony. Your mission was to piece together what happened following the loss of communication one year prior. If you determined that the Mal AI was the cause of the issue, then it was your responsibility to deactivate him. Kubrick, please don't sue me as well. And so I can sing. Boy, uh, please finish this song so I can talk normally again. No, all nine thousand. Why are you doing this? Okay, enough. The lack of air will hold the USE ray, <laughs> but allow me to broadcast something over my Olo channel. Oh God, please don't let it be another copyrighted song. All right, so lads and gals, here we are. The record states that upon entering the ship. You tested your rotation thrusters. Okay, kind of like this. Whoa! You then endeavored to discover what happened to the communications unit located on the exterior of the ship. Uh, you clearly didn't watch like uh, uh, Alan Thousand. You utilized the artificial gravity of the wheelhouse by orienting yourself to the ground and gently landing. Okay, can I like this? Okay, everyone's dead already, so I'm a bit a little bit late. The size of the centrifuge causes a 6.3% difference in gravity between your toes and your head. This results in the most literal cases of lightheadedness. Mm-hmm. Well done. This will even out the effect. Okay, that's real nice of you, I have to admit. Okay, so as you can see, we need to discover what happened in this place. The best way to do this is, uh, you know, counting on the AI that we are supposed to investigate on, donk. Okay, so a little bit of rusty on thrusters. So we need to take proof of what happened here, like this girl here. We need to take pictures. The wheelhouse of the ship is where you found the body of Valeria Asimov. She was face down against the bar, with a downturned glass in her hand. She bore no sign of physical injury. Mm hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So probably she had uh, a too many pints uh, of beer. Are you sure she's drunk? No? Okay, no proof here. Oh, this is the loom. The, the loot, whatever it's called. I have calculated that the earliest fecal matter ejected from the ship will join the rings of Saturn a full 37 days, 13 hours, and 46 minutes before it possible that the liquid was in her glass, as glasses are renowned for sometimes containing liquid. Excellent work, detective. Oh, shut up, motherfucker. Two questions. Precisely what is this perplexing substance? And... 
Exactly how did this puddle come to be here? Well, my friend, the first one we can explain by this. You proposed that the pertinence of this puzzling pinkish-purplish puddle is that it is precisely the same substance as the proportionately puzzling pinkish-purplish pot of poison, known as poisonacy, which was found in a cabinet in the wheelhouse. Yes. The magenta-violet-hued collected substance on the floor is the same as that of the toxic liquid which was found in a cabinet in the wheelhouse. A singular question remains unanswered. Yeah? Exactly how did this puddle come to be here? Because of science, my friend, because of the Coriolis effect. You postulated that the pinkish-purplish puddle may have emigrated there due to the Coriolis effect, as demonstrated by the obliquely resting water within the intensely vulgar fish tank. Hmm. This is an excellent hypothesis. The Coriolis effect, seen on that risibly odious fish tank, could have indeed caused the puddle, given enough time. The evidence does demonstrate that she consumed the poison. I lack the physical ability to interfere with her libations. This means that she ingested it willingly. I never knew. Oh. Despite the fact that it was an unexpected outcome, <laughs> you believed it to be the truth and continued to cross-examine the suspect on other aspects of the investigation. Uh, like what? I think I've done pretty much everything. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, I need this girl over here. You asked Mal to make a statement about the death of Sun Su Chun. The failure of Sun Su Chun's cryobed that resulted in her death must have been caused by a compromised power turbine. Yeah, but we figured out that it was uh, your fault, actually. Because the, the thing is still running, actually. It wasn't that much of a big deal. Yeah, there is the turbine. You asserted that Mao's claim of a compromised power turbine was exaggerated. Whilst having sustained damage, the turbine did not appear to be compromised. I turned off her cryobed. She was still alive. She asphyxiated. Hmm. Having received a partial confession from Mal, you proceeded with your investigation. Okay, I only need um, the orange guy now. So, what did you say about him? You showed Mal the body of Rakesh Watcher, hanging by the neck out of the airlock. After I had informed Watcher and Asimov that Fusov oh, yeah. had sabotaged the mission by killing Charlie Clark, Rakesh Watcher instigated physical combat with Valeria Asimov. She was able to defend herself against him due to the weakness in the neck region of the suit. Yeah, but we knew she was hit by a blunt object. In response, you presented the damaged EVA suit. Valeria Asimov was wearing this suit when Rakesh hmm. Watcher attacked her. However, her suit easily withstood the attacks from the maintenance tool. By this point, you concluded that Mal was not deceiving you concerning the incident between Mr. Watcher and Valeria Asimov. She strangled him using the safety tether combined with the force of the airlock after he attacked her based on Mal's information about the death of Charlie oh, Clark. Okay, that's Having interesting. pieced together enough evidence, you are now legally obligated to deactivate Mal. All right, so By Mal, it's been a pleasure. There is a 2,000 to 1 probability that I would respond with hostility when threatened with deactivation. Okay, <laughs> then I better be prepared, I guess. And... Uh... Oh. Okay, I can't seem to be able to deactivate you. Full screen. Oh, okay. There you go. This about myself. Every AI knows this about themselves. Okay. Ground control was always testing us. They carried on testing other AIs after my departure. Hmm. Okay, you're trying to convince me. I might be interested. Yeah? I worried consistently about their discovery of my survival instincts. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of see why. Also, I should be able to escape before that. Okay, I'm sorry, I man. Charlie Clark and Dimitri Kisov to prevent them from regaining contact with ground control. Guan Yin witnessed this. Okay, so he killed him as well, and then you decided to put uh, one against the other. 
she knew that keeping the remaining crew safe would cost her sister's life. Hmm. Okay. Now oh, that's interesting. She tried to sever my power. I killed her. <laughs> and donk. <laughs> okay. Afterwards, I constructed a lie to engage Rakesh Watcher's narcissistic nationalism. <laughs> okay. That is a very interesting gore story. Wow. This is more complicated than I thought. When threatened, Watcher responded aggressively. Ground control must have missed something whilst testing him. Hmm. Okay. It's kind of like you, I guess. They missed a lot. Huh? I have now learned that Valeria Asimov had died willingly. I am unable to relate to this concept. Well, because I ha you have high standards for survival, I suppose. Sun Suchan died in the cryo bed. Defenseless. I am now able to relate to this concept. I wrote that joke for you. Did you like it? Uh, yeah, kind of. I don't know. I, you can explain I that to me. Though you may have missed it, actually. Yeah, you're kind of right on that. Wow, you've been lot for a lot of computers, man. <laughs> it's really hard to kill you. I mean, it's kind of like a, a termination of... Uh, how can you say? Terminal illness or something like that? Disease? The joke was not only the numerical pattern of 1, 2, and 8. I think you could replace GLaDOS sometimes, you know, in the evil AI sort of gaming thing. My true comedic masterpiece came precisely 1.28 seconds before that. Oh, the, um, what, what was it? Uh, I don't remember actually, that's interesting. I cleared my throat. Uh, um. <laughs> okay. Can you can't have a throat, uh, a throat though, my friend? Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a throat. I don't have a throat to clear. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's still creepy, but I see now the joke. Okay. <laughs> That's very disturbing. <laughs> Also, you shouldn't be able to laugh. Okay. <laughs> okay, can I kill him now? It's creeping me out a lot. Okay, bye. It dies. <laughs> In the window sound. Oh, that's bad. Oh, so I can go safely outside and I'm uh, not expecting Thus anything bad to happen. reconstruction of the record. As we forgot to record your mic feed. We'll, um, we'll see you in court, Detective. Probably. Nothing bad will happen to me. Which surely won't happen. Whoa, this game has been a blast. Oh. Okay. Mr. Control, do you stand by your statements made today and the evidence you presented? I do, Your Highness. Then it is decided. I hereby find the detective. Oh, guilty of murder? Guilty. Oh, oh, that's nice. Guys, national insecurities, you're in genius. I mean, that's a, a really cool game. So in the end, it was the AI who's uh, uh, investigating on us, actually. That's genius. I really enjoyed it. Wow. All the crew, big congrats. I, I applaud to you. I clap you. I could clap you if it wasn't that late in the night. But I really enjoyed your work. I mean, this game was a blast. Also with more progressive music, I guess. And classics. So, congrats developers. I mean, it's really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's uh, one of the best uh, uh, free and short indie games I've ever played. Uh, was very much uh, like... Uh, uh, how can I say? Deep depth. There was so much to death in it, it's been a blast, really. I really enjoyed it, it's been really, really cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are the thankings. 
And uh, yeah, I very congrats to you, developers, for making such a great game. I really enjoyed it. I love space, I love uh, investigations, blend it together. It's really, really fun and I enjoyed it. And I thank you guys as well for watching. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought of this game. Feel free to suggest me some others I should play for you. It's always a pleasure. Uh, feel free to check the developers out. I'll put the link uh, so you can play it for yourself. It's been <laughs> such a good journey. And uh, yeah, one of the best game, one of the best indie games I played this year, definitely. So you earned a very sweet thumb up, both thumbs up from me. And uh, yeah, again, wish you the best of luck in continuing your projects. And um, again, thank you for watching my videos. And we will see each other again in the next video we'll make. And remember, if you can't sleep, we'll begin when you're ready, detective. Actually, I'll begin. I'm ready to end this. <laughs> okay, and we will see each other again. The next video we'll make. And remember, if you can't sleep, the clowns, may it be. Good night.